the impacts of the Holy Spirit in someone's life. This is what uh, we are going to see today. And I ask the Holy Spirit to take us deep. Now, when I'm teaching, you will understand that uh, it's also a bit higher than what you understood. Praise God. Remember, we are still building up on what the Spirit of God started speaking to us. So we are going a bit higher of where or what we understand. Most of us, when we get saved, we, most of the born again Christians. Okay, let me ask. When you talk about the Holy Spirit, what comes into your mind? What was, comes into your mind according to how you have experienced your walk into salvation and so forth? What comes into your mind when you hear or oh, what experience that is very common to most of the servants of God? Yeah. To most of us, what we understand and why, where we have been to for so long is speaking in tongues. Yeah, That's how far we could have gone. That's far we have gone when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Like, just speaking in tongues. Okay, now let's speak in tongues. It ends there. We don't see any other changes. And when the Spirit of God was talking to me concerning this, I realized too, even those who teach about the Holy Spirit, they don't know the Holy Spirit. They have never had an experience with him. Praise God. The far most of even the teachers is, the farest we can go is just being filled by him and start speaking in tongues. That's the farest people could go. And even when you say, now with the works of the Holy Spirit and so forth and so forth, in a minor level, but we don't see them tangibly in people's lives. Even those who are speaking about him. It's like the Holy Spirit was limited in one place. There is a way that the enemy diverted us and stole the reality. It's like the church, Vicky, can you come sit here? Like the church has been stolen from the reality of God, from the truth of God. Praise God. Like the truth of God was taken from the church. And... The church has gone through a lot of reforms. The church has gone through a lot of seasons, a lot of battles. One of the biggest battles that the church has gone through is the battle of stealing and hiding the truth. But in the end time, the Holy Spirit will not be contained again. The Holy Spirit will be revealed. The Holy Spirit will burst out from the places that they have been hiding. And he will bring out the truth that was not known. Praise God. Amen. The church went through that season and it brainwashed the church. To the extent that the church now started acting like just a dormant, a dormant, a dormant power or a powerless person. We have been walking like that for so long. We have not been seeing the church that is written in the Bible. We don't see it. And in the journey of fighting with the truth or hiding the truth of the church, Many institutions were established. People now could sit down with their own mind and write, this is how we are going to conduct the order. And the moment they did that, what they were doing, they were taking away the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was taken away from the church. The Holy Spirit, uh, his power was stolen. He was like chased away. 
we no longer need you we will move through our understanding we will move through our knowledge we will just walk ourselves we will now depend on our minds than depending on you the first church was founded on the holy spirit And any church that does not give a chance to the Holy Spirit is not a church. It's just a bunch of gathering of people who are just gathering for their personal interests. Read your Bible. I hope your Bible says so. I hope your Bible is talking that too. And Jesus knew that there is something very important that is needed to the church. For this move to go, for this faith of Jesus, of Yeshua, to go and be received in the world, there is something that is very important. That's why he said, tell you, wait, wait, I'll give you the key. I'll give you the access to the heavenlies. I'll give you the power with which you can access heavenlies anytime. And with which you bring change to the world. Praise God. Amen. And that's why even now the church cannot say we are kneeling down, we are praying to stand against the, uh, the evil purposes, the evil works and so forth in unison. They cannot come together because even the church itself has forgotten what is prayer. Who is the Holy Spirit? We adapted everything you know, what is happening right now is that um, people who could not go with the lead of the Holy Spirit, who could not follow fully the way of Jesus, a crucifixion life, a sacrificial life, they had to sit down and come out with the doctrines that will be a little bit easy to them. Like, because as a shepherd, okay, as a leader, I cannot quit alcohol. So I'll sit down and come out with a doctrine that will give you a chance to consume alcohol. Because as a leader, I couldn't quit fornication. I'll come up with a doctrine that will allow and accommodate anyone Anyone, even those who are doing fornication, that they may feel comfortable in it. But that's not the purpose of God. Because as a leader, I couldn't stop taking corruption and being a thief. So what would I do? I'll come up with a certain doctrine that will accommodate thieves and corruption takers. And that's when many denominations came out. Hello? Amen. And by doing that, the church was walking away from God. Because the Bible says your sins, it's the sins that separates you from God. What does not allow you to enter and to have an access to God is a sin. So the more you accommodate sin, the more you are pushing God away. And when you push God away, you will not see him in your midst. You will not see his power in your midst. You will not see him working in your midst. Because already by accommodating your lifestyle, by accommodating sin, you are telling him, do not stay among us. We will stay on our own. Instead, we will allow Satan to be with us, not with you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. So this have made a church to be like, I call it a toothless dog. A, just a barking dog, not biting. You know, we have our beautiful dog, Joy. Joy would climb on top of the building and start 
Baki and everyone in the street, even those who are coming from afar in the street, if you are crossing that far, that far, he will, I mean, she, she will back, back. And everyone will be thinking, hey, in that house, they have a big dog. Now, when you come to see, it is small like this. It, it doesn't bite. It just jumps, comes to you, and so forth. That is the church. When they, we sit down, the current church, we sit down and people seize our orders and so forth, our callers as, pa uh, as pastors, as bishops, our cups and so forth. When they see us, they say, oh, mighty power of God. But little demons, <laughs> they turn us upside down because we have compromised. I was with someone from the U.S. and he was praying and he was like, I ask mercy for God, from God. And we are praying for mercy for our nation because the nation that was exporting the power of God is now exporting a lukewarm Christianity. So then they are repenting for exporting lukewarm Christianity. While us, even this morning the Spirit of God was talking to me, was showing me some places. Now us too, we think... Then they are repenting as we are taking as it is and we are bringing it to, it to the church. Forgetting that now it's a season of Africa to rise up with power that we can export the powerful gospel. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And the powerful gospel comes when we embrace the Holy Spirit, the ways of God. Salvation is not easy. I'm still looking. Help me looking for someone, that person. You know the song I'm about to say. The person who said, Tambalale, quiet, Tambalale, please find me. For, can you please search? Who composed that song? Salvation, do not be lied. It's not like that. It's a matter of self denial, yes. it's a matter of sacrifice, yes. it's a matter of crucifixion. It's a daily, daily denial, daily carrying the cross, daily. I say daily. Amen. You don't just carry a cross in January. There are those who will just fast in January. And they will end up two days in January and they are going on. Some they just enter. Salvation is not like that. Salvation is not easy the way you think it is. But it is possible to live a holy life. Yes. Because the more you crucify yourself, the more God shows up. The more you crucify yourself, the more the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So the impact, impact of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, beyond speaking tongues, speaking tongues is just a sign. Praise God. When the rain is about to come down, what sign will you see? Eh? So are the clouds rain? Hello? It's just a sign that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. But it's not the really manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life. There is something beyond speaking in tongues. And that's where the Spirit of God wants us to go to. Beyond the curtains. Beyond just mere speaking in tongues. He just doesn't come up and make you speak in a new tongue. He just doesn't give you only the power. He just doesn't give you only the gift. There is beyond. And the more you speak in tongues, you are ushered to another level. And when you reach that level, when you push more, you go to another level. This is the mystery of the, sp the spiritual realm. You go from one step to another. The more you crucify yourself in one step, you will access the other level. Even speaking in tongues itself, do we speak? How many hours do you speak in tongues a day? Ask your neighbor. How many hours? How often in a week? How often in a year? 
Do we even speak that tongue itself? We don't. I remember our days when we were getting saved. Now we will go to church when we born again. Those years, I'm talking about more than 25 years ago. Um, we go to church and then we, we come into the church, we worship, we worship, we worship, then we say, now it's time to speak in tongues. We speak in tongues and then we get silent. That's all. I don't remember us being told to go home and speak in tongues at home. It was just a, a certain period of time in the church. I don't remember people being encouraged to speak in tongues at home. If it was that, I think I could have been spoken, speaking. I think I could have been far. Praise God. Amen. Because the knowledge was so narrow at that time. People didn't ascend, didn't go deeper, didn't widen their knowledge on the Holy Spirit. They didn't have an experience. That's why I'm saying you can never teach prayer if you never prayed. If you're not a prayerful person, teach us other things. Don't teach us prayer. Praise God. Because the mysteries of the kingdom of God in prayer, you experience them. You go through them. The more you're going, you get some experiences, you know, oh, so this is how it works. That's when you come out and teach. You don't teach, you, just, you don't say, no, I just, no, 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 no. If you're not called in that area, just remain praying, but don't teach. Because we are called in different areas, praise God. Amen. And that's why people are lied. People will come up, seven things to receive a miracle, no, a miracle. Seven things that will make you, two things to do, those are books that are, especially people, the Western world will write more. Seven things to have an answer to this. But with the Spirit of God, when you say seven, he can give you a thousand. Even though the thousand, he will say, I'm just training you. Not yet. With a visible, I mean, tangible experience that someone walks through. Sometimes he will just use one. Now, by saying that people stick into that and they don't see the, and they don't they don't see any result. There are many abilities that comes with the Holy Spirit being released upon the person. When the Holy Spirit comes upon a person, he breaks the barriers in a man. Now that is one. He will break the barrier in a man. Listen, when we were created, I want you to see if you understand, if you agree with me this one. When we got saved, I mean, when we were created before the fall, we were in exactly likeness and power of God. That's why we could talk, Adam could talk with God openly. Praise God. He could talk with him openly. But after the fall, there was a line that was drawn. Do you understand? Yes. A line was drawn that you can, yes, yes, you can talk, but not that much as you were. And I will not show myself openly like how I used to show myself. After the falling. Now, when you accept Jesus, it's one way to enter into that, to be restored back to the original Adam. When you start, you, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will start now removing those barriers that were kept ahead of you, that you may not see God, number one. But also he removes the barriers. You know, that barrier was not just seeing God. Even your ability was limited at the fall. The understanding that Adam had before the fall was not the same that he had after the fall. Something was taken out. Something was removed from him. Even when it comes to functioning of your brain and understanding, something was tempered after the fall. So when you get saved, you're saying, I'm coming back. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you start engaging yourself with the Holy Spirit. Things start changes, changing. The Spirit of God will start removing or installing whatever was taken away from you. 
Remember, he is the only one. Mm, Holy Spirit. Holy. Pray that song. Remember, the Bible says he's the only one who can access the heart of God, right? Do we agree? He's the only one who can see in the heavenlies and take you there to see the things in the heavenlies. Praise God. Now, before the fall, you ha- Adam had an access to heavenlies just at a blink of an eye and so forth, translated to heaven and come back and, and do this. But after the fall, the access was blocked. That's why we do every, not everyone who can have an access now unless you start walking with the Holy Spirit. Now, when he comes and you start engaging with him, he will be downloading. He will be opening heavenlies to you. He will be opening mysteries in the heavenlies. Mysteries not only concerning heaven, even the mysteries concerning this earth. There are things that are still hidden here on earth. We do not know them. The Holy Spirit is the one that will remove that veil, that barrier, and give us access to see the things that are hidden here on earth. When you're told mention, let me give this example. When you're told mention the minerals that are around the world, people mention that what they have seen. But in the end times, some of them will be discovered that are not even in the books. Hello. The Holy Spirit removes the limitation. Like because of your falling nature as a human being, what you do, you are limited. This is the only place that you go. This far you will go. Beyond this you will not go. But when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you start engaging, walking with him, you will start, you will have no limitation. Most of the limitations that you have is because you have not allowed him to install the godly nature in fullness in you. Twenty twenty two, the Lord sent us sent me to Berlin to the Pergamos Museum. In that place, people like artists of the world and big people, artists, so forth, they were they go there. They go. What are they going? They are going to receive those powers that they can perform better in their area. In other words, Satan is equipping them. You find someone writing things and you think, where does the person re- receive that power, that knowledge? Like the person who wrote the book, Harry Potter. Hello? Where do they get those things? They are empowered with the pit of hell. And they come up with things that are unimaginable. The same way God, through the Holy Spirit, is equipping, is able to equip a person to come up with his mysteries from the kingdom of God. The same way. It's just that we are closed in a box. We think this what we know is all that is around. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor what you know is not everything. Even concerning your career, what you know is because of your limitation. You can go further than that. You can know beyond that. When you allow the Holy Spirit and start walking with him. Praise God. There are people who say, this is me. This is the end of it. It's not the end. It's just the beginning. Where our minds end, that's where God's mind starts. What am I trying to say to those who are struggling with understanding? The limitation, that limitation can be removed by the Holy Spirit. There is nothing like Kilaza. No. There is nothing like being dumb. Expose the person that you think is dumb to the Holy Spirit. And see what the Holy Spirit will do in the life of that person. All the things that this man starts doing, they become... Okay, so when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, not only just being filled, now starts walking with the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Spirit removes the limitation in him and her and makes him start operating in divine, extraordinary dimensions. I want to give you jealous. If you are still operating in physical, normal dimensions, you have not ascended. Because when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will start operating in divine and extraordinary dimensions. There is a way you will know things that people does not know. There is a way you will handle things that people cannot handle. There is a way you make decisions that people cannot make. There is an understanding that is only available to those who are walking with the Holy Spirit. There is ability in people that can come upon them, which is beyond human understanding when they start walking with the Holy Spirit. I have the proof I will show you. Praise the name of the living God. All the things that this man starts doing, they become a wonder. There are people who were not, they were nothing. But when they were exposed to the walk of the Holy Spirit, intimate walk with the Holy Spirit, you start wondering, this one too? See how the person have changed. See how this person is doing things. These things become a surprise. They become things that people will be amazed of. And when God wants to differentiate you among your peer, he will store more of his spirit in you. When God wants to make you a wonder, when God wants to make you a miracle, when God wants to make you an amazement, when God wants to make you a testimony, he will release more of his spirit in you. There is a part in a man that makes him to have likeness in the image of God. When you receive the Holy Spirit, it's God who is coming in you. Praise God. It is God who is coming in you. And if God comes in you, he doesn't come half, half. Hello. And when the Spirit of God comes upon you, it's God who is entering you. Now when he comes, he doesn't come half, half. He comes in fullness. Fullness of his understanding. Fullness of his wisdom. Fullness of his knowledge. Fullness of his power. He comes in you. And when the enemy wants you to remain the same person that you are, he will make sure that you do not get an access to the Holy Spirit. Because he knows the moment the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you become unimaginable. The thinking, the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the power of God comes upon us when the Spirit of God comes upon us. You can never be walking with the Holy Spirit and become a normal person. I'll show you the evidence. You cannot be having, never be having an intimate walk of the Holy Spirit closely with him and become just like other people. Never. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible th says, Then God says, let us make a man in our own image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over the earth and every, every, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So the purpose of God was to make a man 
in his likeness and in his image and send and put that man on earth that that person can reign here on earth as he reigns in heaven that was the will of God that let me put a man here on earth this man I'm giving him the same power I have I'm giving him the knowledge I have and this man will be working for me here on earth taking care of this earth as I am taking care of the heavens and the earth from heaven. Genesis 2 7, the Bible says, okay, okay, before I go to this. So the purpose of God was to make you reign here on earth on his behalf. And that's why Jesus, when he was teaching his disciples to pray, he's like, may your will be done here on earth as it is where? In heaven. Now, how can you fulfill the will of God that is in heaven? If you do not have that access of heaven. What does it mean that he was saying. You should see what is happening in heaven. And do it here on earth. Now to us who are born again. Who gives us that access. Who reveals the will of the father in heaven. That we may fulfill it here on earth. Is the Holy Spirit. Now he wants you to do his will in heaven here on earth. Genesis 2, 7, he said that the Lord God formed a man from the dust, from the ground, and breathed. Can I have calmness behind there? Let me have a settlement. Then the Lord God formed a man from the ground and breathed into his nostrils, nostrils the breath of life, and a man became a living being. God breathed. That breath you see in your Bible now, on top of that breath, write the spirit. The breath of God is the spirit of God. So when he was creating a man, what he did, he released his spirit. What is his spirit? Him. When I say, I'm giving, he has his, he has a spirit. That means you have the likeness of that spirit that is coming upon the person. He gave himself the part of him. He released it on a man. Why? Because he wanted that man to have the knowledge of who he is. To have an access to whatever God has. To have the knowledge of whatever God knows. That's why he had to take part of it. And release it. When we pray for impartation on people. What we are doing. When I say now I want to impart what is in me. I'm releasing all that I know upon the person. I'm releasing the power in, in me. The knowledge. That is the meaning of impartation. I'm releasing it upon the person. Now that is what God was doing. Was imparting himself. The second work that the Holy Spirit will do in a man is to compel a man into seeking God. How many of us, we want to know God deeper? Then if you want to know God deeper, you must start walking with the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life. The one that makes someone to keep on seeking God, you seek him, you fast, you pray, you read the word and when you finish again you feel a desire to read it 
Again you feel the desire to pray. Again you feel the desire to seek him more. I love people when they are writing. This is not a political rally. I want people to write. What pushes a man into knowing God more is the Holy Spirit. Ah, is a hunger, godly hunger bringer. He brings the hunger of God in a person. And because of that hunger, a person starts feeling the zeal, the desire of knowing God, of seeking God more and more. If you don't feel like reading the word a whole week, the spirit of God is not with you. If you don't feel like fasting a whole year, you are eating January to December, something is wrong. The spirit of God is not working with you. If you do not feel like praying, you have no desire to know, you're just satisfied with who you are, where you are, you're just enough. You don't feel like going deeper in seeking God. The spirit of God is not The work of the Holy Spirit is to compel men into seeking God. That is one major work. He is pushes us. Seek him no. Seek him more. Why? Because he is telling you there is more that you need to know. There is more that you need to know. You climb one ladder. When you reach in that ladder, he tells you you can go to the second. When you go to a second ladder, you will see him in a different way. You push yourself into knowing him, into seeking him. You reach your second. He says, when in at level three, there is something greater that people does not have. Go to that third level. Go. You push yourself, you go. He pushes you, he compels you. Go. He will tell you again, there is a secret beyond what you know in the third level. Can you go higher that you can know again? It's him who compels us into seeking and knowing God more. He brings the holy hunger. He brings a holy thirst. That's so why you see people, they're asking, why are you fasting? Why are you praying too much? Why are you praying too much? The Holy Spirit is pushing me. There is something more. And he will make me feel it. Sometimes he will make me feel it. I'll feel that there is something. And how he brings it, sometimes he will show you, this is where and this is what God wants to give you. Can you push it that you will receive it? He shows you. Now the problem is when he shows us like this is where God wants to take you. This is what God wants to give you. This is what God wants to handle it in your hands. The problem is when we see it, we sit down. We lack consistency. We lack the dedication. That's where we miss. We do not miss because God does not want to give you. Mm. There, is, there are things God wants to give you. You do not have them. Not because God does not want to give you. It's because you didn't want to push yourself further. That he can trust you with them. When God shows you where he wants to take you, the enemy knows that you want to ascend. So automatically he will create environments and situations. This is the secret you need to know. The enemy will always create an atmosphere to divert you from focusing on what God wants to give you. I pray that God will give you the grace of focus. I pray that God will give you the grace to focus on what God wants to do in your life. That's my deepest desire. If there is something God has given me, it's focusing. I don't know. Now that is the Holy Spirit. He gave me that gift. Me when you, he, God says front. My sister, my brother, my daughters, my sons. Front. And if you want to be my enemy, try disturbing me, telling me look aside. Praise God. 
if you want to see the other part of me, try pulling my neck to the other side when God is saying this is the direction. And this is what have helped me to grow and to see him mightier. He compels us. He knows the goodness of God. The Holy Spirit knows the power of God. He knows what God is capable of. He knows what he can do to you. He knows. You know, this Holy Spirit, he knows your file in heaven. What is the content of your file in heaven? He knows. And that's why he's pushing you more. Because he wants you to have all that is written in your book, in your file, in your blueprint in heaven. We do not have because we don't pray. Hey, you don't have, tell your neighbor, you don't have, if you know what she doesn't have or he doesn't have, mention it. Tell your neighbor, boldly, you don't have because you do not ask. Did you speak? What is it? You don't have ask them no you know what they don't have don't you see them now can you is, is it hidden it is very open tell them you don't have sir you're not telling him tell him behind you Turn. you don't have because you do not ask is it my is it my word is it coming from me in other words the, God, the Lord is saying, you are like that because you do not ask. That is another meaning. Praise God. James 4, I want us to see it. I'm not in a hurry. Are you in a hurry? I'll show you step by step. Until you start loving this Holy Spirit. James chapter 4 verse 2 to 3. James chapter 4 You desire, mm -hmm. okay, let me read this translation. You want what you don't have. Mm -mm. So you skim and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have. I love this translation. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Destroyer. Destiny killer. Because you don't have, you don't want others to have. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. You are jealous because you don't have. You are jealous of the success of someone else. Not because God didn't want to give you. It's because of your laziness. Tell your neighbor, your laziness is the source of your problem, madam or sir. Hello, is it me? I'm just translating by the help of the Holy Spirit. I read it there. You don't have because you don't ask. You don't have because you don't pray. In other words, he's saying, the prayers you're praying are capable of giving you what you have now. Hmm? Aren't you laughing at yourself? All the prayers that you're praying, all the fastings that you're fasting are only capable of giving you what you have now. 
in other words the level of of prayer that you're praying is capable of making the you of now hey you see now it's not the witches you see now it's not the curse because there is a dimension when you reach in prayer curse bows there is a dimension that when you reach in prayer witches bows because he says at his name every knee <laughs> every knee shall bow witches are tormenting you they are stopping you because of the level and the way of your asking that some of you are like a mighty in the spirit. What the spirit of God is trying to reveal to us here is that it's not me. I want you to go further. I want you to have more. But the prayer that you're praying are able to download in the spirit. Are able to bring from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. Only that you have. He's saying increase your prayer. The heavier the prayer, the more you can take things in the spirit and bring them into physical. Your prayer cannot break those gates there. Hey, what a beautiful vision I'm seeing. Now, this is it. Can I have two people? Come, my grandsons. This is it. Your shirt is nice. And you too. Now come another one here. Choose one. Choose one to come. I know, I knew. <laughs> In the spirit. I want you to imagine the spiritual realm as the treasury house or a storage house. Praise God. Where there are simple, simple, simple things. Okay. Mm. Holy Spirit, if I use phones, some people will feel bad. Yes, let me use a pen. Okay, here a pen. Hold this. Tends to have dimension. Ascend. What did I say? Tends to have dimension. Great. This. Um, okay. Let's start. Now we start with this. Which one is higher than the other? These are almost equal, right? Let me. I have a pen. Now this is another dimension. In the spiritual realm, if the deposit is simple, the walls that you have to break are always simple. The security system in the spirit that is guarding normal things is always simple. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, okay, this is simple. If you, this may be, this pen is worthy one million. The security to be kept to guard this pen is worthy one million. Maybe just one guard, Namshali, will be guarding here. Now let's say this pen is worth how much? Ten million. Hold it. You show it. Yes. Ten million. The security system that is going to guard here is strong, equivalent to 10 million. Maybe it's just a guard with just bunduki to your kawaida, a normal gun. Do you get it? We go. Maybe this is worth how much? A hundred million. 
The security system that will guard this place is also worthy. One million. In other words, the, the more expensive, the higher you go on your demand on what you want, the more the security intensifies. Here in the spirit now, they will put a demon equivalent to God one million. So some of you, if you are at this level, it's because your prayer are able only to dismantle a God that guards one million. If that is the level that you're operating. I don't want to say monthly, weekly, though you know yourself how much you get. If you're below that, just know your prayer is also lower than that. Do you get what I'm saying? Now you go higher. If this is the level, just know your prayers have pushed you to the ability of destroying the powers of darkness that are holding on 10 million worthy. Hey, praise God, Holy Spirit. If you're operating in a hundreds, millions, that means your prayers are able to dismantle the spiritual or demonic operations that are in charge of guarding this much. So now you understand that you do not have because your prayers are only capable of here. This is what James is saying. Thank you so much. This is what James is saying. Is it the problem of God? Now, this is an answer to most of you who are saying, I have fasted. I have prayed. You know, even when you pray, we will know that your prayer is worthy how much? Even when you pray. But people are so easy to complain. God, why me? I have fasted. I have prayed. I have given offering. I really don't like those people who say that I've given you. You don't give, you can't buy God. You don't say, God, because I gave you this now, give me. You are foolish. Hello? We do not give because we want God to give us. We give as a part of worship. And you cannot buy God. If you say that you have no difference with the people who wanted to buy anointing, Hello? Amen. The issue is your prayer. I tell you with evidence. The higher you want to go, the stronger your prayers must be. Amen. And don't just say, I pray. You, you know, you can be praying, but you're not moving. I have seen people praying, but you don't see change. There's someone today, I want her to see me. Just remind me, there is someone you want her to see. She's praying, but her prayer. I'm not seeing changes in that prayer. In that prayer, you don't access change. You don't access power. And she's there because of lazy. She knows. Hello? Hello? Tell your neighbor. The spirit of God compels you, pushes you to go deeper because he knows what is in heaven for you and he wants you to have them. It's like an account. An account has, that has a deposit for you is there. And the spirit have seen it. And he tells you, go take, take it. Go take that is yours. Go take that is yours. But what are you saying? No, I'm tired. And you're still sitting there you're complaining. Life is hitting you left and right. And you don't want to rise. There is a dimension. When you enter, there is a realm when you enter. The enemy cannot stop you. 
family pattern bloodline curses cannot stop you witchcraft cannot stop you nothing can stop you when you enter that realm it's just that few enters in that realm with the kingdom of darkness they enter and when they enter they also they offer a higher sacrifice to enter but with the kingdom of God we don't want to offer higher sacrifice we just want to be the same and enter into the higher realms it doesn't work like that the spirit of God compels us into seeking God because he knows what God is capable of. It is the spirit of God that third, he removes a stone heart in us. He removes the stone hearts in us. That we can seek God more. That we can obey God. That we can do God's will. He removes a stone heart. If you have a heart that does not fear God. The spirit has not entered you. If you do not feel like stopping the sin that you are in. Something needs to come upon. Praise God. Shida, ninaona mimi na yeye tu alive. Kwani shida nini? Ndio maana nimeweka mkono. My spirit should go upon her, upon him. Sisi zina kuja. Praise God. There are people that does not fear God at all. They don't want God. Mina, sometimes I wonder God has a lot for you. Mighty beautiful things. Why do you still want the world? God has something beautiful, mighty, glorious that he wants to give you. Why do you still choose the world? Ask your neighbor for me. Me I don't understand. Why don't you want to let go of the flesh? you want to change? Why don't you want to quit that? Because I tell you sometimes, can you just try to quit and see if you will die? Because sometimes it's a matter of decision. Yes. I have decided. I hate the, the self that I am now. I hate the place I am. I hate the situation I'm into. I hate the environment I'm in. I want to change. I want to ascend. I want to accelerate. I just want to go somewhere. Oh my God. So because of that, I'm quitting. And see if you will die. Who told you that you will die? Who told you that you will die? Why do you like Why do you love yourself the way you are? You know I'm talking and the spirit of God is showing me the minds. The minds of the people that are comfortable of who they are. They think that is all God can do. You have not seen yet what God is capable of. Ezekiel 11:19 to 20 he says and I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them and I will take the heart of the stone out of their flesh and give them a heart. I will take out 
I'll take the heart of stone out of their flesh and give them a heart of the flesh. So they will obey my decrees and regulations. Then they will truly be my people and I will be their God. And when God says, I will be your God, he means I will show the people, I will show the world, I will show the people around you that I am the creator. How am I going to show? Means I am going to do mighty things until everyone knows that I am the God. That I'm the one, the supreme power. But he says, he will remove that heart. Now when God comes, when he wants to remove that heart, agree. You don't hold unto it and say, no, wait a, wait a bit, Lord. Wait, after one year, you can take it out. After two years, and if we ask you why, just because of the desires of the flesh. I have a girlfriend. I have a boyfriend. I have a side chick. Chick, I have a side man. I have, I need to drink a bit. I need to explore the world. Who told you that we do not explore the world when we are in Christ? For a mere boyfriend, you deny yourself greatness. Laugh at that person. Laugh at her. Laugh at him. For a mere girlfriend, you deny yourself of greatness. Laugh at that person. For a mere sleep, a mere sleep, you have denied yourself a greater dimension in your life. Laugh at her. Laugh at him. For a mere food for the stomach, you have denied yourself to go higher. Food. What? Food. For a plate of food, tell him or her, as how you. You are ready to sell your birthright. You're ready to sell your power for food. For what? Food. You don't have because you don't ask. For food. For sleep. For people. For friends. You're ready to deny Jesus. You have, imagine how foolish you are and how heaven is thinking. Imagine, for a friend, you have decided to be poor because of friends. Because if you decide to go to Jesus fully, you're like, what are friends going to say? Now, what does it mean? You have chosen friends over the destiny of your life. Praise God, you're not my sister. You're not my husband. I'm talking to men. For people, you are ready to please people and make your family suffer in poverty. For your friends, because you want to please your friends as a woman, you don't want, you want to go to every party that they are calling you. You want to go to every meeting, every talk, every gathering that women are doing. You want to go to them and have talks, senseless talks. Show up in every occasion. Instead of bowing down and pushing in the spirit for your family to change in the situation, you want to please people and make your family suffer. Mungu wana waona. Where are the women who are going to push things in, in spirit until they happen? Where are the men who are going to stand and take a lead in the spirit and say, my family, this is the way we are going with it. And we are not quitting on this way until we see the hand of God in our lives. Amen. If you are a man and it's your wife who is pushing you to pray, you have sold your birthright. When the, the, when the word says you are the head in Ephesians, you are the head of your wife. You are the leader of your family. You should lead them even in the spirit. You cannot lead your family if you are not leading them spiritually. In real sense, you are the one who has to pray more. May this message reach my husband wherever he is in Jesus' name. Atoketu mbea moja. Send him the link. Sir, make sure you listen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Leading is that. You should be the one. If your wife is fasting 10 days, you should go to 20. Because you are a leader. 
busy yelling at other people. Ah, what kind of leaders are, do we have in the nation? Are you a leader in your family? Are you? What kind of leaders do we have? What kind of this and this? These leaders are lazy. Are you a leader? You failed to lead a small institution of five people. And you're throwing stones at people who are leading millions. Don't you see how heaven is laughing at you? God is like, I gave you a territory called a family to lead it. Just your territory. Some of you, you're just two people. Some two and a half. Some just three. Three people, you have failed to lead it. <laughs> and you're asking God for greater dimension to lead. Which one? Do you think God does not know that you failed to lead that small empire? You're telling God, give me bigger empire that I can lead. The spirit of God who searches the hearts of men. He knows that you failed to lead a small empire of five people. How can he trust you with a hundred people? If from today you are a man and you keep on sleeping, you have been called to live in that situation. Don't worry, you go to heaven like a... Like, uh, no, no, no. Like, like Lazarus. But if you're choosing to go like Abraham in heaven, then you must change. Some of you are pointing fingers. The wife that you gave me, not the wife. You are the problem. You are what? Adam, one thing that he failed was leadership. He failed to communicate the idea, the vision of God. On, upon his wife. And that's why the wife was just wondering. And I think he did. He was not romantically known. No, he didn't know. That's why the wife could just go anywhere. If he was good. The wife could be sticking beside him. Yes. It's not marriage. Sabbath. Remove the hard heart. Allow the spirit of God to work on you. Because that was what also he does. He wants it to go out. That you can say it from today, I'll do anything and sacrifice anything for Jesus. Number four. Is it four or five? The spirit is the spirit of God who enabled Moses to have the relationship with God. Now I'm giving you evidence. One beautiful picture that we have with Moses, it was the spirit. It is the spirit of God who was pushing Moses into seeking God. Moses broke the barrier, the limitation that was kept during Adam. He went higher in the seeking of God. He denied himself. He sacrificed everything until he went to the level that Adam was operating before the fall. What do I mean? It is Moses that the Bible says he could talk to God face to face, just like Adam. He broke that barrier that happened after the fall. If he did, you can do it too. You can seek God and see him visibly in your life. Some of you if I ask you, why do you say God is alive? Why do you see God is there? It's because of the preachings that you hear. But you have never seen him tangibly, evidently in your life. If you could have seen him, you could have sought him deeper than how you're seeking him now. Because the moment you, re you see God in one step, you go deeper into seeking him. Moses broke the barrier. If he did, you can do it. Amen. And people are saying, no man can see. People, I went to college. When I was in college, there was a conversation. People were saying, no, it's not possible to see God now. It's not possible to see. Jesus cannot appear to people and now and so forth. I was like, I, was not, I will not uh, participate in this foolish, foolish conversation. I will not engage myself into this. Because they are lazy. They cannot push to seek God higher 
They think Jesus can no longer reveal himself to his people. So I'm like, why, what are you doing in the kingdom of God? Why are you calling yourself servants? Why don't you quit and do some other businesses? Before the tabernacle was built, Moses used to seek God outside the tent. In Exodus 33, you read it, all of it. And Numbers 7, verse 89. The Lord will speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Exodus 33, verse 11. The other person that we see, God could speak with him. He could come and visit him in the evening and talk. They just conversate. It was Adam. After the fall, access was denied. But Moses came by the help of the Spirit of God. Because he was full of the Spirit. Some will be asking, this Holy Spirit came in the New Testament. Where? The Spirit of God was there. And that's why God was like, I will take part of your spirit and give it to these 70 elders. He was filled with the Spirit. The Spirit of God compelled him to seek God him until the barrier was broken. What is the barrier? There are things that are meant for normal people. And there are things that are meant for people who are extraordinary. There are things that everyone can have access. But there are things that only those who are filled by the Spirit of God can have access to them. And that's why you need to push yourself into knowing God more. Because God reveals things according to the dimension that you are. But he also trusts you according to where you are. There is a place things will not be hidden from you. There is a dimension of walk with God when you enter. God will not take it to hide things from you. He was like, should I go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah without telling my friend Abraham? Because Abraham broke that barrier. He loved this God. He sought this God. He was ready to sacrifice anything for him to see God. He was like, a son, a just mere son, I'll give him to, him, him, to you if you want. What do you want, God? Just normal offerings? What do you want, God? Me to leave my father and my mother to follow you? I will leave everything for you, God. And God said, this man is my man. This man is my man. This is my man. Can God say, that is my daughter, my son, there on earth? Can God put a coin for you? Because of the sacrifice that you have made. Some of you, you are not even ready to express your faith before your family members. You don't want them to know that you have Christ. You are ready to compromise. This is July. Five months before December. You are hearing this message. And you are hearing And yet you want God to trust you with many. The biggest test to chaga people is to leave their father and their mother. I repeat. All the chaga write this. The biggest test to chaga is to leave their father and their mother. I think you should read the story of Abraham many times. Because that's where your test is. That's where the test is. And most of you, you have failed it. And the second you know it, what is it? What is it? What is it? Money. Last for money. You fail to operate where God wants to take you. Praise God. In Numbers 11. Numbers 11, you see the story of 70 elders. God saying, no, I'm taking part of the spirit of you, Moses. The spirit was upon Moses that pushed him to seek God deeper until the limitation was removed. 
With God, there is nothing that he cannot do. It's just that you don't ask. Hey, it's just that you don't ask him. That's why you see limitations. That's why you say, this one is only for this kind of people. This one, I don't think anyone else can have. When I was moving to Arusha, people were saying, and I met even one sister. I will never forget her. She said, when it comes to minings and minerals, it's only people, there is a lot of witchcraft, so only non-born again people can do. She's foolish. If that is, all, the only problem is witches, then you have Christ. Why don't you bring your Christ into witchcraft? What you're trying to tell us is that witchcraft is stronger than God. There are things that are made, people they say they are just meant to certain kind of people. But when you seek God deeper, through the help of the Holy Spirit, every barrier will be broken. There are dimensions that people say no man can reach. You can reach in Jesus name. There are levels that they say man cannot ascend to. You can ascend to in Jesus might name. There are things that the people they say you can never possess. You can possess I'm not talking about your school here. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm not talking about the network that you have. I'm not talking. <laughs> this Spirit of God can break the protocol of networks. Amen. If you have zero network and you have the Spirit of God, this Spirit will break the limit will make you ascend to dimensions that man can never ascend. It must show. Let it show that you have God. Not just by talking. Let it show that you have a different God. Let it show that your God is powerful than them. There must, there must be an evidence that you have God. A strong evidence through your life. May you seek him. May you ask him until that limitation is broken, until everyone who sees you say no. That one has God. That one has God, has God. That one has God. When they see you in the streets, when they see you when you pray, when you open your mouth to pray, let them say no, has God. When they hear you speaking, let them say no, she has God, he has God. When they see how your business is operating in a way that they don't, they are not used to, let them say, you have God. Amen. Let it show. Let it show. Let it show Amen. that you have God. Amen. Five, he changes you into another man. That's the work of the Holy Spirit too. He changes you into another man. Hey, I'm talking to people. Who is here and is saying me? There are people, when they look at themselves, they're like, I don't think that anything good can come out of me. Are you here? Who is saying when I look at myself, when I look at my background, the pain that I went through, the troubles that I went through, the situations that I've been through, I don't think anything good can come out of me. He changes you into another man. First Samuel 10, 6 to 7. He says, then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily and you shall prophesy with them and be changed into another man. The sign of you being filled with the Holy Spirit is not only speaking tongues. It's when we see you being changed into another man. You were weak. You become strong. You were uncapable. You become capable. You were poor. Now you become rich. You had no fear of God. Now you have fear of God. You couldn't stand out before people. Now you are bold and you can stand before people. He changes you into another man. You went to bondages of fornication. You went to bondages and addictions. You are changed to another man. You start operating not as a normal man. And everyone who sees you will say, Hey, is this the same glory that we knew? 
is she the same person that we knew? When he comes, he will change you. Just allow him. Allow him. Ask. Seek. Knock. Seek him. Tell him this afternoon, I desire you. I want to change. Ah, the way you are. Some of you, when I'm speaking, you say, even with the level of my education, I'm not talking about CVs here. I'm saying he will change you into another man. He will change you into someone that people will envy. Into someone that people will admire. Into someone that people will say, hey, we need your God. If this is what your God can do, we want that God. We want that God. He takes people from mud. <laughs> he washes them. He raises them. And he makes them sit with the kings. People that no one expected anything better to come out. To mount up to anything. He changes them. This spirit when he comes. This Holy Spirit when he comes. Saul was changed into another man. David was changed into a mighty man. In 1 Samuel 16, 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel arose and went to Ramah. This is David. That even the relatives, we are saying this, we are the only number. We are the only people that are in this family. That one we cannot even number him. He is not even worthy to be counted as one of us because he is nothing. But when the Spirit of God came, the one who was low became higher than all of them. May God raise you among your siblings. May God make you great among the people who sees you as nothing. May God make them come and bow before you. May they then come and seek your God. May they come to the help of you. Like how he did with Joseph. If you choose to remain where you are, it is you. But you can choose to change. The problem is not God. His spirit is available. His spirit is available. The spirit of God is hovering. The Lord is looking for people that he can transform. But the issue is for the sake of our lusts, for the sake of our self-desires, for the sake of the things of the flesh, we don't want to let him work on us. The spirit of God starts working on you, pruning you in a month you go back to where you are. Instead of allowing him to work on you completely, you give him limitations. You block him. Same David who was nobody, he reached up a place. His whole life was changed when the spirit was released upon him. Most of the psalms that David wrote was, be, was prophetic work. Was the influence of the Holy Spirit that came upon him. Read yourself Acts 1.16, Acts 4.25. You will see that the psalms that he wrote was the work of the Holy Spirit. He came and said, Oh God, you're my God. Earnestly I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my body longs for you. In a dry, dry and weary land where there is no water, I have seen you in the sanctuary 
and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. Psalm 63. David is saying, I have seen you, God. How can he not say, say that I have seen you, God? How can he not say, I have seen you, God, when this God took him from nothing, made him from nobody to somebody? Instead of hiring people to go and keep the sheep, they said, we have this nobody here. Send him. Why should we spend money hiring other people to go and keep the sheep there? Let's send him. They send him because he's a nobody. Saul was changed to the extent that everyone who saw him said, is this the same Saul that we knew? He will change you into another man. I, man and I'm also, He makes you like the spirit you're carrying. Number six, he will make you like the spirit that you're carrying. When the spirit of God comes, of, comes upon you, it will change you and make you like the spirit you're carrying. Now, I want to explain a bit deeper here. To everyone, there is an assignment. Hello? When the Spirit of God comes, it will change you and make you look like the assignment that you are sent to do here on earth. Say what am I talking? That is John. Because the assignment he had was irrelevant to the assignment that Elijah was doing. When the Spirit came upon him, it changed him until people could see some of Elijah thing in him. If God have called you to be a leader, when the spirit of God comes upon you, it will change you. People who are seeing you like you know, cannot stand, you can lead nothing. Suddenly, they see a mighty leader in you. If you're called into business, when the spirit of God comes to you, it will change you. When those people who saw this one cannot even sell tomato. When they see you, they see a mighty business person. When the spirit comes, it will change you and you will look like the assignment that you have been called to do. In 2 Kings 2.15, the sons, now when the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho opposite him saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elijah. Elisha said, I want to do the assignment that Elijah was doing. But I want to fulfill it twice. I want double of it. When the Spirit of God came upon Elisha, he was changed. These people, when they just saw him, they saw this one also has a spirit of Elijah. Even before he explained anything that happened, they just saw him. The Spirit of God can change you. Can change you into a machine that people would never imagine you could have been to. The Spirit of God ushers you, that's number seven, into dimensions he nev you never operated into. Do you understand now that the Spirit of God does not just make you speak in tongues? He will make you operate into dimensions that you never operated into. Saul was just a normal man. Suddenly when the Spirit of God came upon him, he started prophesying. People were shocked. Eh? So Saul, you again, you are a prophet nowadays. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. People will be shocked. I remember those years when I was starting people when I was preaching. You are now a pastor. When the spirit of God comes upon you he will change you totally and he will usher you into dimensions that you never operated into. 
He is full of knowledge. He is omniscient. He will give you knowledge over things that you never went to school to start them. I have seen it evidently in my life. <laughs> you're just seated suddenly he will drop an answer. He will tell you this is how it should be done. Hello. I call it the technical part of the Holy Spirit. He does, just doesn't operate spiritually. The spirit, he doesn't just work on spiritual part. He can also give you the technical part. You are a medical doctor. You are injecting us medicine and we are not healed. Ascend. The purpose of God was not just you to inject us. Who is a doctor? Doctors stand up. Today there are few. Doctors send her. Where is Namnyak? She is teaching the children. Where is she? Doing what? Call her. Who is the doctor? Who is the doctor? Let's define a doctor. Spiritually. How when we say a doctor, what do we say? Eh? Eh? A person who carries healing mantle. You have given us 20 doors. We are still sick. Ascend. Who is the doctor? Someone that has been enabled in the spirit to heal people. You have given us metakephalin. We are the same. Injected us what again? Tetesacrin. We are the same. Gave us again what? We are the same. And you are comfortable because you are being paid a, a salary. You will answer in heaven. When you start treating your career as your calling, things will change. If you could have invested in the spirit... And ask the Holy Spirit, give me the answer. Imagine, you just focus on one disease. Lord, they are saying there is no cure for diabetes. Holy Spirit, give me a tip on this. Suddenly the Spirit of God drops it in your heart. Only that. Are you going to be the same in this world? You are like that because you do not ask. I didn't want to say the other word because you will feel bad. But you are there where you are because you do not ask. You are called as a medical doctor. You are praying for other things. Why don't you focus on your area? Have you ever seen? Oh, can you try to imagine when the Spirit of God is looking at you and you're treating people and people are just going the same way they came? You rely more on the medicine than his guidance. You enter your duty hours without even being sure that the spirit of God is going with me. That is your ground to portray the power of God. You're seated there people say, no, we will not see another doctor. We will only wait for her. Because when you go to her, you come out healed. Sit down. Imagine when God is ask, will ask you in heaven, why those people died? You have done finance. Hey, God, help me. Where is this going? You have got done finance in man, and you don't have that money. Why don't you ask him the secret to wealth? Because if you felt in your heart, you felt, um, let me see people who started finance. Finance, account, stand. Hallelujah. Hey, why are you not standing? I saw you. Praise God. Why don't you ask God for a secret cord of wealth? Okay, let me ask you. Why did you start that? Why? Mm. 
Why did you start for, uh, the money issues? Because since I was young, I was feeling like this, that was my goal. Thank you. Why did you start it, Katip? Well, money, mine is kind of complicated because um, that is not what I wanted to start. Yes. You sit down. <laughs> now you know. Why did you start it? I loved it. You love it. Why did you start it, sir? Even without a mic. You saw yourself good in numbers and said, okay, now this money counting. Why did you start it, my daughter? Eh? You like it. Why did you start it? Because I like it. You like it. Sir, why did you start it? Because I want to manage my business. You are, you are, your issue also is different. You can sit. I want those who's, who, who felt like they love it. That was God speaking to you that I'm releasing this anointing upon you. Stand up, Udeme. That is God speaking to you that I'm releasing upon you the mantle of money. Instead of asking him, God, can you give me a key? Of one area through which people will say there is God in heaven in this area of money. You're busy praying for other things. That's why you are there. Please be seated. And in any other area that you're called to do. That is 1 Samuel 10.10. 10. He ushers you to other dimensions. He gives you boldness and extraordinary strength. The Holy Spirit when he comes. Don't just say me. I'm afraid to stand before people. I cannot talk much. I cannot align my sentences. Some of you, when you're with your friends outside there, you can talk. Everyone can hear. But when we bring you before people... <laughs> What you lack is the Holy Spirit. You are sweating for nothing. You just need the Holy Spirit. You just need the Holy Spirit. Judges 14, 6. At the moment the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. And he ripped the lion's jaws apart with his bare hands. He did it easily as if it was a young goat. But he didn't tell his father or his mother. This is Samson. He was so bold. the spirit the Maasai people carries. Ripped off the lion. At this time, he didn't want even know the family to know how bold and powerful he is. When the spirit of God comes upon you, you become unstoppable. Amen. What other men cannot do, the spirit of God enables you to do them. Yes. Strange things. Strange things. The Bible talks about the disciples that when the Spirit of God came upon them, boldly they stood up and they started preaching. The same Peter who was denying Jesus, that one, I don't know him. A fearful dog. He was like that. When they say, Peter, no, the way you talk, you are one of them. Me? No. No, I don't know him. He's running away. They say, Peter, even the way you walk, you're showing us at you. You are the disciple of him. Say, me? No, no, no. The same Peter who denied Jesus stood up boldly and started preaching the gospel. You are afraid. You are full of fear of small, small things. Fear of death. Fear of losing. Fear of failing. Fear of so and so and so. Because you don't have the spirit. All that you need is the Holy Spirit. And when he just comes upon you, he will not just give you boldness to stand. He will give you also utterances to speak. So if you cannot stand before people and order your speech, there are those people who cannot talk. Do you know that? When they stand before people, they can stand, but they, can, they don't know how to talk. They will start the beginning to the end. They will go back to start first. They cannot align their speech. The Spirit of God gives you utterances. 
What you need is to ask him, give me utterances. Words to speak. Help me to speak. Release your words. When I stand before people, according to the situation, give me the words to say utterances. He differentiates you. Genesis 41, 38. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, He will differentiate you. He will make you different. So Pharaoh asked his officials, Genesis 41, 38. So Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man, so obviously filled with the Spirit of God? That's the, also the work of the Holy Spirit to make you different. Stop copying, copying things from people. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you your own code. This is the same spirit that differentiated Joseph and differentiated Daniel. People say we have governors in this city, but Daniel is different. People in this nation of Egypt, but Joseph is different. Why? The Spirit of God gave him the access to mysteries. Elisha had the same spirit. Him being absent does not change anything. He will be at his house. He knows what is happening wherever you are. This is also Daniel. You will be sleeping in your bedroom. He will know. Now, if he was capable of knowing what you were dreaming, he also knew what you were wearing at that time. Hey, Manu, Sakatai, Mendayaman. I remember during the reign of the former president, the Lord would take me many times to see his works. <laughs> Even now, he would take me to see much things reserved in the heart, not to be spoken. Even to some peoples. Many times you take me to many kings' homes to see them. Kings of the world. He will show you mysteries. I remember we were in California, Lancaster, during the conference. The Spirit of God showed me the two attacks that were coming upon President Trump. And I read the people to pray for it. And when it happened, people started calling. They nearly assassinated him. And good enough, I had to sit down and tell some people, this is about to happen. And I said, I saw two attempts. And I saw two attempts. When the first one happened, when I was telling them the second one is about to happen, people didn't believe. And even when the attack was about to be tempted, when they were tempting to attack him, what I saw, the people around him betrayed him. God raised someone from far. Someone who was not even that much close. He's the one who rose up to defend him. And I called, told them, the people around him, the people around him, watch. So I said, let's pray that God will give him the right cycle. He will differentiate you. He made Joseph different because of the things that he was revealing to him. Because of the things that he was revealing to him. The same happened to Daniel. The same happened to Elisha. They're like, who is selling our secrets? Do we have a betrayer in our midst? He said, no, don't worry. There is a man. He doesn't need to be here. If he just closes his eyes, he will be in your bedroom, sir. 
There is a meeting that is about to terminate you. People are plotting. They are seated they are about to terminate you. You need the spirit of God to tell you something is about to happen against you. How can, be, can things be happening to you, a son of God, by surprise? Say in the name of Jesus. From today, things will not happen by surprise in my life. I will get an access to know them. People, a letter is being handed over to you. You know that you are being fired after being given a letter. Where is the Holy Spirit? Who searches the hearts of men and knows the heart of God? Who knows the hidden secrets that no man knows about it? It's just that you didn't pray. You have not prayed. That's why people can sit, can plot, can do everything against you without your, your awareness. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God, when He comes, He will give you leadership skills. I'll give you just Bible verses. God gave leadership skills to Moses. I mean to Joshua. Numbers 27, 18. He gave the leadership skills. Upon Othaniel. Judges 3, 10. He gave leadership skills upon Gideon. Judges 6, 34. He gave the leadership skills upon Jephthah. Judges 11, 29. And the last for today, he gives you life. He gives you, gives you life. There is something that the Spirit of God is showing me. There are people who in the spirit, they are dead already. In the physical, they are walking. They are just here waiting for the day to go. But because the spirit of death has been released upon them in the spirit, they are done. They are done. Their lives are done. There is someone here. Things in one sign that the spirit of God has been thrown upon you. It's not just dead. Death in physical. Even when your things are stuck, they don't move any long. It means in the spirit you have been declared that this is your end. If you're here, come to the front. As we raise up all of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God of my grace. If you're here, Things and I say, one of the signs of the spirit of death is this. Things does not move in your life. That is the sign that they have declared in the spirit that this is your end. You go nowhere. Where can you go while you are about to die? That's a sign. If you are here, things are like that, are not moving. Come to the front. Because the Spirit of God gives life. Gives life. Ezekiel 37. He was told, breathe life into these people. In Ezekiel 37. In Romans 8, 11, he said, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies. By the same spirit living within you. you to speak in tongues. Pray if you have a gift of tongue. 
Just keep on praying here in front. Ask God for mercy and tell him, help me, God. Tell him, help me, God. All of us behind there, some of you, you think things are moving, but they're not moving. Are you where God wants you to be? Keep on praying. Even who are there, pray in the spirit, pray. Pray in the spirit. I, want, I don't hear people praying. I want to hear people pray. Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Cry to him. Tell him, help me, God. Tell him, help me, God. Help me, Jesus. Help me. Help me. Help me. Where I am, I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. Tell him, I need your help. Tell him, I need your help. I need your help. I'm stuck. I need your help. I cannot move. I need your help. I cannot do anything. I need your help, God. I need your help, God. They have declared that I can no longer go anywhere. I will mount up to nothing again. That this is the end of me. In the spirit, they have buried me. I'm down. There is no life in me. I need your help. Pray. Pray. I need your help, God. Spirit of God. Spirit of God, I need your help. Spirit of God, breathe life in your children. 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 Oraba Sakataya. Marimonda Yamasetea, Ribranda Zanamosetea, Ricori Ataya Mande, Ricori Ataya Mande, Ricori Ataya, Resecate Ataya. We call upon the four winds to breathe life in your children. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Help, Lord, help. Help, Jesus. Help, Jesus. Help upon your daughter. Help, Jesus. Help, Jesus. Help, Jesus. Help, Jesus. Jesus Help Jesus Help Jesus Ooh. Ooh. 
of that coffin help Jesus help Jesus help Jesus pray 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 Setaya mando zanamati Ribrosa kaya mande setai Repasa kataya manda Ribrosa katana namande Rebrasa kataya Remose katete Setaya taya rana Hibrosa naraba Setete tete Retete tete tete
Holy Spirit, fire! Let everyone pray. Let everyone pray. yourself in grave no first in the coffins you ever saw yourself in a coffin or you're seeing coffins in your dreams or whatever you see coffins come to the front if you have seen coffin another one if you're seeing yourself in the graveyard let them not go let them stay there there it is worse than let them come you see yourself in a graveyard. In a graveyard. All that you see is yourself, Makaburini. Come to the front too. Another sign of that spirit. Whatever you're starting is dying. It's dying. You start things, they die. They die. They don't grow up to be mature. They don't go higher. Any seed you're planting doesn't grow to be a big tree. They die. Come to the front too. Move, move front. When you're here, pray. Speak in tongues. If you're still here, keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Speak in tongues. All of us pray. Tell God, help me. Tell the Holy Spirit, locate my situation. Locate my situation. Pray there. Tell the Holy Spirit. Locate my situation. Locate my situation. Locate my situation. 
Locate my situation. Prasana Madora Manda. Prena Mane Ketea Nanadosa. Rimanda Yaka Seketea. Remo Siri Ataya. Fire. 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 Life in your mind. Life in your mind. Life. 
Arbeit. There are those who have fear in everything. If you're here and you're always afraid. Afraid, just afraid. And this is also one of the signs. Right now you're feeling pain on your forehead. You have fear. And spirit, instead of the spirit of boldness, move front. You are like them in front. You have fear. If you have fear, it's not the spirit of God. The spirit of God didn't give us. He doesn't make us fearful. He gives us the spirit of power and might. Senemanda. Fear and timidity is a spirit from the enemy. If you have fear, come, come, come to the front. When you're here, keep on praying. Come on, keep on praying there. Tell the Lord to locate you.
Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Thank you so much. There are two people, two types of people. One, you're feeling pain right now on your forehead. Your mind has been attacked. And another one, you're feeling this. It's not really deep pain, but there is some discomfort in your feet. You're feeling sort of, it's not really fire, but it's a sign of attack in your feet. Just hold on those two places. Bring her. Pray. I said pray that the heavens will locate you. Stay the way. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, to 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 your feet. Of the Holy Ghost. Let the true fire consume those bondages. Let the true fire consume those bondages. From the crown of your head, deep down your heart, into your chest, to your feet, to the soles of your feet. Fire! Fire the Holy Spirit. any medical report any threatening medical report both of you who are here and those who are watching online I want you to hold that medical report <laughs> hold that medical report <laughs> let your fire Holy Spirit so tired Consume those diseases. You have any medical report or you're sick? Rasokotaya. Fire the Holy Spirit into your head. Fire the Holy Spirit to anyone with a heart problem, and anyone with a brain problem. Fire the Holy Spirit. To anyone with the problems in the kidneys. Fire the Holy Spirit. To anyone with the liver problem. Fire the Holy Spirit. To anyone with the ulcer problems. Ulcer problems. Ulcers. Ulcers. Fire of the Holy Spirit. To the wombs. To fallopian tubes, to the ovaries that are blocked. Fire of the Holy Spirit! Fire of the Holy Spirit to anyone with the fibroids, anyone with diabetes, diabetes, diabetes. Fire of the Holy Spirit! Let the healing take place in your body. Let healing take place in your body to anyone. With any blood disease, any blood disease, any blood disease, any blood disease, fire! Thank you, Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, to the soles of your feet. Ah, diabetes, hypertension, HIV, cancer, different types of cancer. Breast cancer, cervical cancer, 
cancer in the blood, skin cancer, skin cancer, skin cancer, skin cancer. Fire! 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 Fire the Holy Spirit! Fire the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Masokotana mande. Riprozana man sikitia. Rekosa katana mashiti. We glorify you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. There is still someone that you feel pain on your right foot. Your right foot is like you are having muscle cramps on your right foot. Masokorantaya man. Father, we speak healing. Healing, healing. We uproot you, spirit of death. 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 We are brought to spirit of death in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name, we speak life over everyone. We speak life over each and everyone. We speak life. Spirit, you give life. We speak life. You give courage and boldness. We speak courage. We speak courage. We speak openness of the minds and deliverances of the minds. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the skills that you're dropping in the minds of your children. Thank you for business ideas that you're dropping. You're not just dropping the ideas, but you're empowering them to do them and to succeed in those areas. Thank you for job opportunities that you're releasing. Thank you for the open doors, O oh Spirit of God. With your mighty power as a mighty wind, you're opening all the closed doors. Every closed doors is open this afternoon, is open this hour, is open this time. Let your mighty wind blow and open every closed door, every closed door, every closed door. Open up, open up. your hands of praise to Jesus. Give your hands of praise to Jesus. <laughs>